But now, so what I'm really into is every single thing that I get onto, I'm looking how to increase that, how to enhance it, how to take it to another level because we literally, in the times that we're living in, we have every single option, every single piece of information at our fingertips. There's nothing out of our grasp. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Does anyone here have Facebook? Yeah. Does anyone here have an Amazon account? Yes. Does anyone do one click and your book comes in a couple of days? You don't even have to put your credit card in. You just click and it's there. That's the kind of world we live in. So it's really amazing that we can we can kind of like play around with ancient wisdom from like the, the ancient masters of herbalism and ancient cultures that brought together a lot of these these amazing food options and create our own alchemical concoctions. Everyone on board with that? Yeah. Cool. So for anyone that doesn't know who I am, my name's Ronnie Landis and I've you know it's it's there's a lot I could say. I don't really want to talk too much about myself, but just to give you guys an idea of who I am and what I'm all about, my main mission in life is all about at this point, it's all about really the, the deep down mystery of nutrition. And I'm a raw foodist, I'm a super foodist, chocolatier, herbalist, whatever. I'm into all that stuff. Um, and my mission is actually to bring all this information out to the forefront. You know, every generation for like the last hundred years, let's just like, just like in the raw food kind of world, the last hundred years, there's always been people to really get onto this information and really just put it out into the, the mainframe and I decided to be one of those people in my life and just take in all this information and just put it out there and let you guys do whatever you want with it. There's no judgment, no, no any of that. It's just if you resonate with it, great. It's here for you. So that's what I'm all about. Um, yeah. So, oh, you know what? Um, can someone back there grab my Vitamix? Uh, the Vitamix. Yeah, I'm Let's definitely gonna it. need that thing. <laughs> so I want to. So here's the idea of what I'm putting, what I put together. Thank you. Yeah. Right on, dude. Okay. So what I'm really into in reference to this this whole thing that I'm doing is I'm really into obviously I'm really into like superfoods and raw foods and and blending those two worlds together because the way I look at it, raw foods and superfoods are not exactly the same category because there's, there's a whole different piece to it. I'm not really going to get too much into that. We can talk about that later. But the world of food and nutrition kind of gets lumped together a lot. And what I'm really into is actually bringing a little more discernment to health and lifestyle and attitude and all that stuff. Because there's too much generalizations going on, especially in the health world. So I really want to like actually get down to certain details because the details are very important. Um, what I've done here is I'm blending philosophical herbal practices like ancient Chinese herbalism and also this whole thing on water and superfoods and we're creating a fusion of those two elements okay because a lot of us are really into like the whole superfood thing but the old idea of superfoods when they first came out in the whole powder form is that people would just like throw a bunch of powders in the blender and they haphazardly and they would just blend it up some people I almost blew out my, my blender one time doing that because it's just like there's no there's no strategy right so what I'm really into is being strategic and actually doing things that are conducive to you know what you're what you want to get out of it the herbal aspect what I did with this drink um, you know everyone's kind of like into the whole like um, the whole tea idea right the little packets <coughs> Who, who's into that? Who gets the packets at the store and drops those in their water and lets that kind of decoct a little and you have your herbal iced tea or whatever it is, right? We all know about that. The problem with that idea is that it's not really, like modern day herbalism in that form is not really, it, it's a little silly. It's, it's, it's a good thing to like know about, but then after a while you have to actually walk through the door and kind of like bypass <laughs> the whole little tea bag idea and start getting into the real stuff. The tonic herbs, the, the, the herbs that literally tonify your body. Does anyone know what that means when I say tonify your body? You work it out. You work it out, exactly. So like you go to the gym, right? You work out your muscles, right? Same thing, the whole herbalism idea is actually to tonify your organ system, right? Because a lot of us in raw food know that Raw food can be massively um, 
uh, transformative for your for your entire body. But there sometimes there comes that point when you've done too much like you've done too much vegetable juice, you've done too much alkalizing, or on the flip side, like too much fruit or whatever it is, and then your digestive system starts to weaken. Actually, that's that's a big thing in the the hardcore raw food. Uh, world that can happen if you get like if you go too far off the pendulum. So when you start adding in ancient plants that have what's called alkaloids, which are basically the bitter the bitter medicinal properties that are in all like wild plants, right? Like cacao, for example, I talk about has something called theobromine. That's that's an alkaloid. That's that's a medicine that's actually sealed within that plant. And what I did with this drink is that I started this morning, I got my spring water, and I put in like probably six of those packets uh, um, of what's called gynostemma tea. If anyone, like if you're into the tea idea, whatever, like literally, whatever tea packet you have, you need to replace it with this. And I can get into this stuff all day long. This, this is um, by probably the most sophisticated Chinese herbal company out there bar none dragon herbs by a guy named Ron T Garden who's literally like he's like the forerunner for all the the Chinese herbal information that's been put out into put out into the US over the last 30 years this guy's like one of the forerunners and he put this company together so gynostemma tea is an incredibly uh, incredibly like rejuvenating herbal uh, combination. It's really relaxing. It, it's really clarity building. So what I did is I put about six of those in here and I put in something else called party up, uh, howdy arco, which is, which is like an Amazonian herb. It, it's a bark that comes off a tree. And when you start to heat it and you start to um, not boil it, but you start to, you start to heat it up just enough, it starts to disperse properties that are very elastic. Um, they, they create elasticity in the body. You guys know what that means? Like your joints and your your um, your ligaments. It starts to create flexibility in your body. That's what that plant's all about. So we've been doing this all day long. So instead of just doing like a tea for like five or ten minutes, getting it hot and then drinking it, the actual herbal science is actually saying that when you, you want to slow heat your tea over six hours, eight hours. I mean, it doesn't have to be that long, but just like like even over an hour can be very, uh, very beneficial. You can extract all the properties into the water and then create like a real medicinal drink. Because what we're doing is we're combining nutritive properties, which is like the superfood idea, and then medicinal properties, which is the herbal idea. You guys following me? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're bringing those two ideas together. And liquid nutrition is really the future of it all. Because everyone here kind of knows, like, we've all been burdened down by, like, extremely dense, concentrated foods, whether they be, like, animal foods or they be a lot of, like, um, weird kind of cooked food concoctions or processed foods. All of our systems have been really burdened with the residue of that, and that's where the liquid nutrition comes in because our digestive system has been you know it's been kind of sidetracked so when you get liquid nutrition in your body can absorb it more readily and you don't have to digest it as much does that make sense because when you digest stuff you have something called hydrochloric acid which acts as like a firewall and can break down a lot of the nutrients so when you drink it you get all that in okay so what we're going to do here is I'm going to run through, I'm going to run us through like a little process that I do to really create not only something that's really rejuvenative, but something that tastes good and something that's fun to make. Like this is all about fun, really. It's not like you don't have to get like what I do. You don't have to do all every single step by step. You figure it out. I do, I'm just showing you what I do and then you guys play with it, figure it out for yourself. So we're going to throw in at first some goji berries, what I have left. And I'm so on the goji berry train. It's ridiculous. And I would say to everybody here that likes goji berries, th this company, the company I referenced, Dragon Herb, I'm not getting paid to say this, by the way. I'm just so really inspired by the level of quality that they're bringing to the market. I, I just have to bring it out there. Um, Dragon Herbs goji berries are, without a doubt, the best goji berries on the market by none. Uh, you know, it, it's undeniable. So if you guys are into goji berries, the stuff in the store is good. It's a good like entry point, but this is where the real deal is. So we're gonna throw those in. Goji berries 
have kind of like what's like known as a demulsant effect, so they create like a thickening agent. And something that's really cool about goji berries is that they contain a high concentration of something called sesquiterpenoids. The hell is sesquiterpenoid? It's basically a compound that stimulates through the pituitary gland, uh, gland human growth hormone. Does that ring a bell with anyone? Oh, yes. Right? Especially as you get older, that becomes something that we need to look into, like our testosterone levels and that stuff. Our, our hormones get really attacked by all the different like influences, the atmospheric influences, the, the, the weird food substances that we've ingested for years. That all has an effect on our hormones. And if our hormones start to go down, every other thing in our life will go down too. Our hormones create everything, our brain activity, everything. So goji berries are extremely beneficial for activating human growth hormone. Um, we're gonna put that in there then, let's see here. I'm gonna throw in some coconut oil after Cody in the back grabs me a spoon. Or awesome, that's good. A little piece on coconut oil. Coconut oil can be, if used appropriately, one of your best friends for a number of reasons. I won't get too deep into it, but the purpose for it in this drink is that it is a, it's a potentiator of other ingredients. See, the whole thing about what I'm doing here is not so much like just throwing in random things. It's actually strategically putting certain ingredients that act synergistically together. Does that make sense? Right? Every single food here, because we're dealing with real food, it has a personality, so to speak. It has certain properties that go together with other foods that can create a really, um, really amazing uh, a drink. So we're gonna throw a little bit of coconut oil in there. Maybe like, whatever, I don't measure stuff, just so you know. And we're gonna be feeding pretty much everyone, so we throw a heaping spoon of it in there, just enough. seeds at home that was gonna be a good one but it's all good oh you know what I do have though in replacement I am going to put in cacao butter a lot of the magic about cacao is when they when they make cacao powder and butter they they you, it goes from the bean and then there's certain machines that at low temperature actually split it off so you have the cake material and you have the butter a lot of the magic of cacao is sealed in the butter and it also adds in that kind of thickening age. It gives the, gives the drink a little fat, gives it a little body. You don't want your drink to be too flimsy. So we're gonna throw in there. I'm all about creating magic through food, so. You know like the law of attraction and all that stuff? It's all good, it's, it's totally awesome. And I was into that for like 10 years before I ever got into this, or like something like that. And I was always like the success literature, all that stuff. I was so into it, but I was missing the element of you are what you eat. And once I brought that into the picture, you are what you think about is like, it's nothing now. So when you bring in this kind of thing, it's like it, it changes your thoughts very quickly. So what we're going to do, we're going to blend this up first. And actually, we're going to throw a little bit of this water in there. See, I go through different blending phases. So we're gonna blend up the, the fat of it, the kind of the body of it. We're gonna blend that all up. And then we're gonna create the thickening agent. Okay. Can you more water, Connie? No. We are per that was perfect. Exactly perfect enough. Because I got this whole thing here. So, oh, I'm totally backwards. Okay. <coughs> Who here has a Vitamix? See, at least we can see that. Does anyone here have a Vitamix? Has anyone like blown the top off your Vitamix? Yes. No. Right, so make sure when you do it, the dials are down because that's happened to me many times and it's not fun. So we're just start low and then you bring it up. I like to bring it up slow. Some people just flip it on, whatever. Bring it up and then... What's good about this, so now it's got like that thick, frothy, um, 
feel to it. And now what we're going to do, we're going to throw in our other ingredients before we put on top the, the final part, which is the tea. So let's see, what do we want to go with first? We're going to jump on to one of my favorite things right now. This is like my herb of choice at the moment, Hoshu Wu. Has anyone heard of Hoshu Wu? Yes. Okay, this, this is an amazing Chinese tonic herb, um, again by Dragon Herbs. And it, it's really, its main property is, um, it, it's really very adaptogenic. So an adaptogenic substance is basically something you can take in and it helps adapt to stress. Does anyone here get stressed? <laughs> uh, you eat all the raw food you want. It's like we still live in this world, right? With all kinds of varying personalities and all kinds of nonsense from left to right, right? So adaptogens, in my opinion, are critical to put into your diet somewhere, somehow, because they help you adapt to stress in a very real way. So what we're doing, also another thing that is really important to kind of like tune into is that, as you can see, I'm doing tablets. I don't really recommend just like swallowing the tablets and trying to digest it, because like I said, you're gonna burn up a lot of that on the way down, and it's your body may or may not assimilate it, depending on where you're at with that. What I like to do is one of two things. Either I break open the capsule like this, and I have my tongue up so it goes underneath my tongue, Just kind of sit with it. Actually, it tastes good. Um, or, what we're doing with the tea idea is that we're just going to break it open and put it into a tea, just like you would get a you would get a powder. <coughs> just break open this right here, throw it in, and now you have it in your drink. Because, like I said, if you get onto liquid nutrition, you can absorb it a lot quicker. Especially if you swish it in your mouth and leave it there for a minute. Don't just like, don't just like drink it. Let it let it kind of marinate, pre-signaturize, so to speak, before it before it informs your body of what it's going to do. Who thinks food is information? Does anyone like believe that in any way, whichever? Why are you guys here in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Like you guys could be, you could be down the street at Smoking Joe Bob's Burger Shack, you know, or whatever that place was that we drove by. But for some reason, you guys are here, right? Oh, by the way, all the years of like going through success literature and technology, there's one phrase that has always stuck with me: eighty percent of your results, or eighty percent of anything you want to do in life, is just showing up. Eighty percent, right, Tommy? He knows, yeah, that, he knows big time. Um, I mean, we all know that actually because, you know, when I used to go to school, I was the worst student because none of that stuff like really resonated with me, um, but I showed up. So I knew if like 20%, if I actually just applied myself, I could, be, I could be successful. But I went to like some personal development seminar or a place like this, showed up, took action, and now I'm doing this, right? So 80% of your results, just show up. So, thanks for showing up. Okay, now what we're gonna do, oh, you know what? We'll throw in the carob. Who, who's into carob? I like carobs. Carobs, yeah, that's cool. Right? Oh, we did, we did secret chocolate where's the, where's, seal of approval. Does carob grow on trees? Yeah, it's like a leguminous plant. It does, right? It's like yeah, a it's like a bush. legume, yeah. yeah. That, great question, yeah, and that's a good thing about fats, because there's whole, this whole like thing in the health food world, the raw food world about about like no fat this, no fat that, and it's, it's valid information applied in certain situations like healing diets. Like if you've overburdened yourself with all kinds of like animal fats and cooked fats and like rancid fats, yeah, you gotta get, you gotta really get away from that, but eventually you have to rebuild and fat is critical. Important fats like, like um, omega-3 fatty acids and saturated fats like that are in, that are in uh, coconut oil and Cacao. Fat, fat insulates our nerve fibers, so it helps us deal with our environment. And our brain is a ma major portion of it is saturated fat, and all the nerve or all the like electrolytical impulses that are blasting through our brain are surrounded by fatty tissue. So that's like the potentiator. So that goes in with like the whole potentiator idea is that a lot of vitamins are fat soluble. And have that's, to be delivered through yeah. a fat source. Fat soluble, that's right. Totally. That's awesome, thank you. Yeah, so um, carob, carob's cool, it's great. Um, 
I had some issues with Carob before. Um, I've made my peace with the Carob plant. Um, so carob is really high in calcium. It has a lot of minerals. It's really high in calcium, but um, not that you really need calcium um, if you're into raw foods, if you're eating a lot of plant foods, green leafy vegetables, the chances of you needing calcium are like really slim. But it's a good balance to cacao because cacao is super concentrated in magnesium, which is a super important mineral. So they, they bounce off each other. They potentiate a little bit. So we're doing that. Now let's get into the, the, the star of the show, which is our, our chocolate. Um, I'm really into chocolate, like really into chocolate it, it's I mean I couldn't even sit here and really give you the full download that's why I wrote like 40 pages on it in my book is like the magic surrounding chocolate is so ridiculous it like the history behind cacao is so absurd you actually can't believe it until you start digging into like the books and you start digging into the ancient um, Maya books like the Popol Vuh which is like their like the Maya's like Bible, and you find out that they didn't have an apple tree or whatever that was, whatever they told us was. They didn't have an apple tree. They had a cacao tree, and this food was actually the central source of nourishment, along with like chia seeds in the Maya civilization, in the Aztec civilization, the Olmecs, the Toltecs. Why did the Spanish come over and start start like start a trading with the Aztecs and eventually take their land over? Because one of the reasons in the history books, the real history books, is that they saw the whole culture was surrounded by cacao and they started playing with it and found that they could actually sustain themselves over long durations of travel on just cacao. And then they brought it over to they brought it over to Spain and then they kind of just like they just kind of like played with it in inappropriate manners and started started like putting like refined sugar in it and that's what created like the confectionery um, chocolate that we all know of but amazingly enough in the age of all information we have the real thing again and we can play with it in really cool ways okay anyway so cacao we're gonna throw I think I put in like one spoon we'll throw in two and then we're gonna go ahead and throw in three plus one more because I'm doing the demo and that's one. the deal <laughs> Oh no, that wasn't a full note. Hold on. It is a chocolate. Another thing about cacao that's really important to understand as to the synergistic effects that it has with other foods is that it's what's known as a vasodilator. And what that is is that that compound that I talked about, theobromine, which a lot of people in the health food world kind of like demonize, theobromine used appropriately is actually one of the most amazing compounds in any in the world of pharmacology that I've ever seen and you know and you know and you can tell your story um, in a minute about that theobromine and from 1890 to 1930 was used as a was used and injected into the heart into the heart of heart attack patients to revive their heart so a chocolate extract was used to save someone's heart right so there's like there's a lot of different undertones revolving chocolate in the heart Sacred chocolate. Steve Adler's chocolate is in the shape of a heart. So, there you go. Um, the vasodilator effect is basically is that it relaxes our it relaxes our blood vessels, so our capillaries in our blood. Has anyone had chocolate or had? Um, I know women, women for sure. Like you know, when when it's that time of the month and you need like some kind of thing, what is it? It's, a lot of times it's chocolate, right? And it has that relaxing effect. Well, that's actually a delivery mechanism to bring in other <coughs> nutrition. So when you're mixing chocolate in with all these other ingredients, you actually increase the deliver, delivery um, ability into your body because it relaxes your bloodstream, opens up the capillaries, and all the nutrition comes in. So after I work out, I really like to use cacao because it relaxes me. It doesn't stimulate me so much because I've already stimulated my body through exercise. So afterwards, it actually relaxes me and then everything comes in. Um, and then we're going to run through this a little. Did By the way, I, 
I, I think I forgot. Did we pass out the chocolate? Since I'm running my mouth so much, I, the whole idea was gotcha, you. So. Thank you. <laughs> They're passing out um, Sacred Steve's uh, raw chocolate for you guys while I'm going to be up here. <laughs> and Blue Green Algae has such a, a, a partnership with cacao in the sense that both of those foods are the only two foods that we know of that contain PEA or phenethylamines. And basically what that is, <clears throat> that's the love chemical. That's what's been scientifically identified as the literally the chemical that is stimulated in the brain when someone falls in love or has like a euphoric experience. So blue-green algae and cacao both have that in common. Plus blue-green algae has so many other things going for it. It's, it's um, an amazing source of chlorophyll protein. So we throw... What you like, just don't throw a flavor. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you put in too much like algae, like blue green algae specifically, like chlorella spirulina can be okay. Blue green algae, if you do too much, it can throw the flavor a little. The next thing we're going to do is this is sea salt. Sea salt. Awesome. So the potentiator idea, sea salt in particular, is, is another potentiator. So the whole thing with salt is a long story, but I'll give you the brief, the brief understanding with salt is that. Salt is essential for human function. Our adrenal glands, our kidneys run on salt. They run on sodium. Mm -hmm. And our brain actually runs on, a lot on sodium. Who's, here, who's heard about electrolytes? Right, we all got sold the whole like Gatorade, the high fructose corn syrup, sugar water purple idea, right? So actually what an electrolyte is, is a combination of different minerals like potassium and uh, calcium, magnesium, and sodium. So when you sweat after a workout and you taste your sweat, what does it taste like? Salt. It's like salt, right? So, you know, if you're on a cleansing diet or you've had too much of the wrong types of salt, like the Morden's ionized white table salt, which is refined salt, you don't want any of that. You might have to cleanse yourself of it for a while, but then you have to get back on it. Like adrenal fatigue can have a lot to do with not having salt. Boy, he knows that from his own experience. Yeah, that's right. So we're, but, but thing, you don't have to put a lot in, like, you know, like chefs and stuff, they put a lot in. I'm not putting a lot in. I'm putting just a little bit in to give it that pizzazz, to give it that spark. Like coconut oil and sea salt, they pop. When they come together, they, they just bring a whole new uh, element. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> okay. I live on that. I'm good. <laughs> okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do is, yeah, perfect. So I'm going to start pouring in our hot tea. There we go. So you didn't boil the um, party arco? No, and actually, a really interesting thing that I got turned on to a while ago about making tea is that when you know the whole raw food thing, um, for most foods, not all foods, it's not accurate, but for most foods, there's like a flip point, which is like around 118, 125, something like that. We're not like totally accurate. But when it comes to water, we're talking about like spring water, for example. Spring water is one of the most um, molecularly advanced substances in this world. The information that's contained in water, the water molecules, is beyond anything we really know of in any other foods. Like chlorophyll and fresh vegetable juices is very similar, but it's, it's a little bit different. So the point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of information that's in water and there's a flip point with water too when you're heating it. So you never want to boil your water if you're going to drink it. What you want to do is bring it up to the point where it's like right below boiling, but it's not quite there. Once it gets there, then you bring it down, let it simmer. Just let it sit there and simmer until you're ready to drink it. So the flip point is like 168, right around that, that area before it starts to flip into, um, it starts to change the molecular structure. Talk about glucocytosis water right quick. Glucocytosis. Is anyone familiar with um, glucocytosis or the white blood cell um, reaction that happens in the body when yeah. that's been scientifically um, reviewed in the 1930s when, when someone eats more dominant cooked food than they do raw food? There was a study that came out in um, Swiss, uh, a Swiss uh, university by Dr. Paul Kuchkoff and Basically, what he found out was when someone can, eats more 
cook food than they do raw food. They have a white blood cell re reaction or a um, leukocytosis reaction, which is basically your body's immune system getting activated. So it's basically responding to a foreign invasion is what's happening in the body. So it has immune system defects if you consume too much cooked food. But what he also found out was if you eat 51% raw plant food in comparison to the cooked food, you won't have that same, that same set off in the body. Isn't that interesting? I, we never knew that because we just kind of got confused with like Fritos, Cheetos, and chili cheese burritos and that whole story. And we never knew that this whole other, this whole other reality existed surrounding food. So that's really interesting. Yeah, can you explain how that uh, relates to the flip point of water then? Well, it's, it's the same concept. Yeah. So if you, if you consume water that's been boiling and that it changes the structure of it, because water is very structured, so it has a lot of information. If you start to boil it, you start to disturb that information, and when it goes into your body, your body's kind of like, it doesn't recognize it. Does it make sense? So it has, it has the same immunological um, setup. Okay, so we're going to blend this up one more time, and then we're going to put in two more things, and then I'm going to serve it. gentle with my blending because you are dealing with heat when you blend something so I like to kind of like play with it I don't like to just blast it for like 10 minutes you, you know you want to be somewhat attentive with it oh my god that this is super frothy you know the way chocolate was always consumed like hundreds and hundreds even thousands of years ago from the Aztecs and the Mayans they would consume it as a hot drink, actually. It wasn't consumed as, like, the paste chocolate bar. You guys know that, right? That was a recent invention. Um, they would consume it, like, in a hot drink. And then it would be frothy. They valued the froth. That, to them, was, like, that was the deal. That was the essence of it. So I like to kind of, like, replay that whole, that whole um, reality and creating a little froth with the drink. Okay, the last two things I'm going to do is, well, we're going to throw in a little chocolate sti uh, stevia. I like, I like honey. I'm a, I'm a honey fanatic. I actually just started a bee, a bee operation in my house. We have the boxes and everything, so we got the whole deal. Um, bees are really interesting creatures, by the way. Um, but, you know, if you're not into it or you, like, have allergic, allergies to, like, uh, sugar, you have ch sugar um, problems, you're low glycemic, or you're just, you're vegan, you just don't want honey. That's cool. It's like, there's other options. Stevia is a great option that I've been playing with as I'm kind of like, I probably did 20 pounds of honey in the last two months, literally. So I'm kind of like, okay, we're going to like, we're, we're, we're good. It's cool. So I've been playing with no sugar sweeteners like stevia. There's no sugar. It's, it's extract of the stevia plant. So we're going to do this and it gives that chocolatey flavor. We'll go one, two, and since it's a big drink, we will go, we'll do three after. Did you say that's chocolate stevia? It's a chocolate, yeah, chocolate stevia. So like in my teas that we make sometimes, I don't, if I don't put any, any kind of sweetener, I don't put cacao in all my stuff. I put that in, it has the same kind of flavor. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is, this, this product that I'm about to tell you about is really revolutionary. It's called Mega Hydrate. Has anyone heard about this? It's not in your local store, health food store. This is something of a specialty item, but everyone can get it online if you're into it. This is really activation supplementation. Okay, so there are a few supplements out there that I'm really into. Um, basically, the point behind this is that it's a super antioxidant. You know, we always hear about antioxidants and how good they are, but, you know, what is an antioxidant? It's antioxidation, right? So... A lot of us, just in our general day-to-day -day life, we're exposed to oxidative stress, which is breaking down the cell walls of our body. It's, it's breaking down everything. So if you have any kind of infl inflammatory issue, migraines, um, lactic acid buildup, so on and so on, there is an inflammatory response in the body. This, this um, formulation was put together to offset that. So it's... It's really hydration. It's, it's based on hydrogen, 
which is like, if you break down hydrogen, it's hydrogen, which means hydration generator. Does that make sense? You're generating hydrogen or hydration, right? So you're getting hydrated, basically. Well, that's why it's called mega hydrate. Yeah, so we're going to throw two of these things in there. And, and just to kind of give you, paint a picture for you, because what I'm talking about, like if I'm over your head or something, you know, it's cool. Who cares? You won't remember it anyways. But basically what this is doing is that as we blend it up, it is exposed to a certain level of oxidation. So this, the idea that I always think of is that this acts as a shield around the nutrients and helps it kind of encapsulate it from excessive oxidation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, great, awesome. So we're gonna throw one more of those in there. We're gonna hit it one more time with the stevia and then we are going to uh, pass it all out. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yes, sir. Are you guys sleeping? No. Is everyone awake? Thank you. Okay, um, another thing, when you're using stevia, start small. Because you can do too much stevia and there's no turning back, right? <laughs> there's no going back from it, so it can be it can be really powerful. It's really good in teas, though. It seems to have like a really good synergy in like hot tea, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, okay. So let's do one, two, three. So we go slow. We go slow. Let it kind of synergize. Let it, you know. And go. you gotta feel it out. You gotta feel it out. You can't, you know, you gotta play with it. Right? And now you turn on the turbo boosters. Okay, that's it. Perfect. Oh, oh, oh. froth. That's a froth. Excited. That's the mega hydrate reacting. That is the mega. Yeah, that's the mega hydrate reacting. It's, it's um. Generating. It's generating. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So we're good. It's vitamin C. If you guys come here real quick, look at this. Look at this is this is what happens. This is what I'm talking about with that mega hydrate. If you look, it's 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 reacting to it. And it's a hundred percent natural silica based substance. Yeah, it holds everything in suspension. That's the whole thing. It's holding it in suspension, exactly. That's pretty cool, huh? That's beautiful. Yeah, I know it's like alchemy right here. Yeah. Whoever wants it, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good, bro. Oh, yeah, drink too. And we have tons of chocolate too, so we're gonna bring that all out. I have to make sure everyone gets enough if we have a bunch left over, which it looks like we're going to. We'll probably be able to do refills here. I'm doing a bit. I'm putting together a big event with David Wolf, and he's pretty much he's like the guy who really inspired so much of this for really all of us and for me. And he's your partner, and um, the amazing, the amazing like things you guys are doing in Sacred Chocolate. Anyway, so we're putting this uh, event together, this major event, not like just like okay, he's coming in, talking, and leaving. Like this event is next level. A bunch of us, a couple days before, are driving up to Mount Shasta. We're filling up like 50 to 100 gallons of the best spring water this side of the world. We're bringing it back for everyone for free. So you're drinking, you're not drinking anything but spring water that day. This spring water, the aquifer down from the top of Mount Shasta to it comes out, is 50 years old. That's a really good point. 50 years old. The, the water you're going to drink is 50 freaking years old when it comes out. Yeah, so I got someone that asked me, well, you know, I heard Mount Shasta has like aluminum like residue on the side of the road or something like that. I'm like, well, even if that is true, because we've talked to the people there and we understand actually where spring water comes from. Spring water is not coming out of like a tap that's being like constantly right. um, influenced. Some springs are different, but this spring water, this spring in particular, has a 50-year point that he mentioned from the very top of Mount, Spra Mount Shasta, getting all the way down to the bottom where it's coming right back out through the through the hole. So the spring water is literally recycling itself as it goes through this like 50 year process, which is outrageous. So we're doing that. Then um, in the morning, my friends Beth Ann and Christian uh, Bates, who are like elixir masters, they're going to be running the tonic bar. In the morning when you walk in, we have a morning mocha tonic bar set up. So no Starbucks in this event. Don't even bring that. Come here. Get the wow. tonic bar, the tonic concoction like we just made there, except they've been doing this for like eight years. Yeah. So they're masters at it. And then we're doing the whole thing with me and David. We're going through our whole routine. And then 
We're, we're having an all-night raw chocolate nightclub party. So that, that's going to be ridiculous. So we have music, DJ. Um, I might get my friend uh, Kyle Cease, who's like a famous comedian I just spent the weekend with in uh, L.A. This guy is one of the funniest people I've ever met. And um, so we're talking about bringing him over and doing like a comedy set. Um, so we just like pile on whatever we can to get this thing rocking in the flow. Um, so here are the flyers. These are all the flyers for the event. It has all the information. It has my contact information, the event registration, and everything. So if you guys want, if you don't have it, take one of those. My band Isaiah with the camera, we went out to San Jose, or I went out to San Jose to meet with him and spent the day there, and we put together this um, incredibly well done promo video. If you guys haven't checked that out, really yeah, awesome video, right? Yeah, it's yeah, really well done. So if anyone here has like any video needs or anything <coughs> like that, you need to talk to my man Isaiah. I've known this guy for like 10 years. This guy is a mad scientist in what he does. So you guys need to talk to him. And then um, I'm going to, I'm going to step off for a minute. I wanted to bring my good friend Dave, aka the raw food Thank trucker. Right? The famous, the famous raw food Ooh. trucker. And then he's going to tell you guys a little bit about no, himself. And please note that I've kept it off by, by saying hi, raw organic vegan. Yeah, the other thing is uh, there's so much healing going on with the raw organic vegan movement that it is astounding to me what's going on. Um, I reversed diabetes in four days Whoa. when I started juice feasting, and I've done three 90-day juice feasts, well, 89 to 92-day juice feasts, where I just drank dark green leafy vegetable juice as much as I wanted, minimum of a gallon a day. Um, I did this while I was a big rig driver, driving around the United States, around the country, up and down uh, uh, Seattle to San Diego and back every week, working a 60 to 70 hour week. Um, it can be done, it can be done safely. I still have all my fingers, all my toes, was never involved in an accident while I was doing this. The longest juice feast I've done is four months. And I'm not out to prove anything to anybody. I've been challenged by a couple people to do a one year juice feast. Uh, just like, you know, 90 days wasn't enough. Yeah, you know, really. Three, of, three 90 days in a four month over a period of two and a half years, yeah. Um, but I love juicing, and I love juice feasting. So I'm going along, I'm thinking, wow, I'm really healthy, everything's great. I got off of, of uh, 19 prescription medications, I got off of all but one in six months. Not intending to, just as I became in tune with my body in the first six months, I started realizing I was taking these prescription medications. They, I didn't feel good. Um, I had acid reflux. When I went raw organic vegan in less than 10 days, I was off of two prescription medications for it. I used to get a bottle of Rolaids a day, or four packs of Rolaids a day, because I was so committed to eating my three pounds of red meat a day. My two, my, my three two-pound Tillamook blocks of uh, cheese every week, um, you know? And so I'm going along, and two Septembers ago, I had a heart attack and a stroke. My doc, my heart doctor, when he found out that I had gotten off of all these medications, and seven of them were for the heart, he freaked out. He just lost it. He was like, I am not. I mean, dude, you know, he was lit. And uh, what happened was his nurse took a look at what I was ordering and realized I hadn't been ordering any more of the medication except for this one heart medication. I tried and tried and tried to get off it and I, I, I always had to go back on it. But still, if you think about it, it took me 50 years to get to a point where I need to be on 19 prescription medications, six over-the-counter medications, for a total of 25 medications just to live. Just to live. And uh, in six months, I got off of all but one medication out of 25. It, it, the raw organic vegan movement is absolutely phenomenal. It is truly the best healing diet on the planet. With that said, my doctor said, I'm not giving you any more heart medication. You've got to come in. You've got to do this and this and this. You've got to take a little blood test. And I got routed over to Arizona. So what happened was I had to skip my appointment with him. So he would not refill my prescription for the one heart Four days or five days after it ran out, I had a heart attack. That released a piece of plaque in my heart, went into my brain, oh my I had a stroke. Now this is two Septembers ago. 
I was paralyzed, and the hospital records show this, between 85 and 90 percent of my body was paralyzed on the right side. Um, I had the doctors, which <laughs> it was crazy, I couldn't talk, so they jacked me up, and now suddenly I'm on 11 prescription medications mm -hmm. overnight again. Mm -hmm. Those made me even sicker as, as it was going on. Um, and uh, basically what happened was uh, a friend of mine, David Wolf, got a hold of me somehow uh, through a friend when he found out I had had the heart attack and he said, you really need to start eating raw chocolate. You need to get chocolate now. <laughs> and he gave me, he and a friend of his, uh, through a friend of his, he gave me some raw chocolate. And it just happened to be Sacred Hearts chocolate. I actually have spoken in over 50 different places since this happened. And Steve happens to be the owner of the company, primary owner, and he never knew what was going on until just recently. I went all over the place. When I started, I've eaten all these different raw chocolates. There is, I, I don't know how to explain it except mm -hmm. to say that when you're in tune with your body, there is something on a spiritual level, and I, I, I know how crazy this sounds, but with sacred, and I'm, I'm not connected to them financially at all. Um, <laughs> I am, but there is something spiritual to Sacred Hearts chocolates, and I'll let him yes. talk about that. And I'm gonna ask him if he would just go over the theobromine and what it does for the heart. But the bottom line is that while I was in that hospital, I decided I was going to start, or actually it was right after that hospital, I decided I'm going to start doing this. Man, all my raw friends, everybody, the doctors, my whole list, particularly like, crazy, no, don't do it. And what it came down to was I had already reversed colon cancer. I had already reversed diabetes. I've already reversed kidney problems. I've already reversed obesity. I'd already reversed acid reflux. Um, I've reversed arthritis. I mean, there were seven diseases, five of which I could have died from. If you add the stroke and the heart attack, I have now reversed seven diseases that I could have died from, all through raw organic vegan food. But here's the key to what I want to talk about tonight, because this is a chocolate party, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing to have these debates about theobromine, bromine, is that how you pronounce it? Theobromine. Yeah, theobromine. <laughs> and chocolate, and whether or not it's good for you. It's quite another when you're paralyzed <laughs> on 90% of your body. You're coming out from a heart attack. You're on 11 different prescription medications. And half the raw food world is going, no, it will kill you. And the other half is going, this is the greatest <laughs> stuff since ice cream. <laughs> you know, raw ice cream. <laughs> and so, you know, the bottom line yeah. is this. I, I, I tasted it. I tried it. I went on a fast where I, I was careful on how I did it, and I, I took a lot of dark green juice. I refused to eat any cooked food in the hospitals. You have the right to do that. The lead doctor, yeah, the lead doctor from the hospital uh, quit, said he was not the lead doctor for me anymore. Um, when I told them, that, well, I didn't tell them, I couldn't talk, but Teresa, who was with me at the time, she explained to them that I would respectfully drink water for however long I was going to be there, but. I was not touching cooked food. And she told me to where to go to on the YouTube, check it out, or Google me or something. But uh, I just, you know, I knew what I needed to do laying in the hospital bed, having survived these other diseases, what it was going to take for me to reverse this. Okay? Within 90 days, 99% of my paralysis was gone. I am no longer paralyzed anyway. I have a little bit of nerve damage on the tips of these two fingers, and right here, and that is it. That is wow. it. And I could go into a whole thing about that, but tonight we're talking about chocolate, and I want to bring it back to the raw chocolate and really Sacred Hearts chocolate, because I eat a piece, I yeah. eat two ounces of it every single day. And there's a spiritual connection that I have that I was not clear in what they're doing or how they're doing it, but there was something different about that chocolate. Yeah. And when you come in tune to your body, um, I, I, I liken it to my experience with what I call rocket fuel when I discovered alfalfa and went into figuring out what was going on with alfalfa, why it had this effect on me. And uh, so Steve didn't know it at the time, a friend of mine um, bought about $1,000 worth of chocolate. And uh, I went up and down the I-5 with my rig and introduced it to uh, at least 30 places. I know five of them are carrying it now. Um, but I believe so deeply in the power of chocolate and what it can do for the heart. And all, what I want to tell you guys is two Septembers ago, which is what now, about a year and a half, I'm still here. 
got all my toes. Nice. I believe I made the right decision. Yeah. Um, I really do. I mean, if you can look at me now and say, wow, I can tell you had a heart attack. You know, I can tell you were paralyzed. Um, chocolate is a gift from God, and I didn't know it. I'm just going to my parents' house. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to get everyone around the table because we're about to eat. I just wanted to, uh, you know, let everyone know what's going on. And um, if we could just, like, I do, uh, I just wanted to um, kind of set, like, our intentions for just, like, a second. It'll take, like, 30 seconds. Um, I, I have a question. Sure. Just to that? interject, um, this guy is pretty much like the cacao shaman, in my opinion, around here. So maybe if uh, Sacred Steve would like to set uh, an intention for us, I think that would be really, really cool. That would be okay, great. that's great. Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah. That would be awesome. Push you on the spot. Um, why don't we... Uh, how many here are familiar with the uh, the family prayer? Oh yeah, yeah. we all that many times. Yeah, okay. Um, it's actually um, I learned it from David Wolf, um, and he learned it from David Jubb, and David Jubb learned it from a Native American, and um, it's just a simple, wonderful prayer, and it just um, kind of sets the tone for. This beautiful bounty here. Um, and I can lead it and then everybody can repeat mm. afterwards. You want to go for that? Yes. Okay, yeah. look at this while we like circle up and go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm much happier. Yeah. Hey, hold on. I go like that every second. <laughs> okay. Through this food. Through this food. And this family. And this family. We give ourselves strength. We give ourselves strength. To hold ourselves high. To hold ourselves high. In the light that surrounds us. In the light that surrounds us. And is within us. And is within us. For these are the waters. For these are the waters. Of the spring of life. Of the spring of life. Aho! Aho! Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Thank you, Steve. Um, so there's plates over here and utensils. Um, I think if we want to get to know each other. Sesame uh, pesto, What's and it has good? no chocolate in it, just so you know. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, uh, but it has a lot of lemon juice, right? Yeah. It is so oh, good. It's good. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be going for that since I eat chocolate every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to know who made this one right here. Oh, I made that. Oh, we got to talk about that. That really good. I think it's got to go on right here. So actually, sunflower seeds, olives, and chocolate. Uh, <laughs> chocolate cheese, and there's some more in the in the kitchen. Find your and friend those share with vegetables <laughs> are just stuff I got from farmer's market. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. oh.